Hello and welcome to my Nikon Z180 to 600mm sharpness and distortion review where we will be deep diving into this lens covering its center and corner sharpness and has this lens got a sweet spot across its focal length and at what aperture. We'll also be covering distortion and vignetting too of course. So come on, let's get into it and I'll talk you through it. So to test this lens out, I designed a chart myself with a few little different bits and pieces in it. Firstly, I have distortion bars, and as you can see, it's also a completely white chart, so we can check vignetting too as well going forward on a whole series of lenses. The distortion bars, as I mentioned, are on the four sides. Now, I have also created different sections in the chart itself, so I can check things like corner sharpness and the center of the image sharpness to see how well the lens is actually performing. You can see a lot of circular designs too as well in this lens chart, purely because I find it easier to see sharpness on circular designs than I do on straight lines. For some weird reason, don't ask me why, the two overlaid circle patterns too as well also help as there are large high contrast sections and multiple different shapes there too as well. So again, I just find it easy to see sharpness in those specific designs. Now I also have a test image here too as well of this chart which I shot on my Nikon Z 105mm macro lens at f5.6. So you can see the corner sharpness points when I zoom in on it here now are still fairly sharp. So to give you an idea of exactly how sharp the Z 180-600mm lens is, I'm going to be comparing it directly with my Z 70-200 f2.8 lens because we all know this lens is really sharp. But I'm going to shoot both of these lenses at 180 millimeter and we're going to see exactly how much of a difference there is between the two of them. In saying that, and before we start, I do want to say this lens is not going to compete with a prime lens for overall sharpness. But I must also say one person's idea of sharp could be completely different to another person's. The same way as we all see noise differently and have different tolerance levels. So please do keep that in mind. And that's why I have these reference shots. So you can actually judge for yourself, is this lens sharp enough for you? So the shot was taken on the 70 to 200 f2.8 lens at 180 millimeter at f8. When we zoom into the center of the image, you can see this is sharp and there is a nice bit of detail there. So let's do the same thing now on the 180 to 600 mm lens at 180 millimeter. And again, this looks good enough. So let's look at both shots side by side and see which one is better. I think you will see there isn't a massive difference between both these lenses. And as the 70 to 200 is an awesome lens, that's a great start for the 180 to 600. Then when we compare it with my reference shot from the 105mm lens, you can see it's clearly not going to beat a prime lens here. The 105mm shot is the clear winner here, of course. So looking at those two results from these two brilliant lenses, you can clearly see the Z180-600 is not a soft lens. It still produces really sharp results. Considering the 70 to 200 f2.8 is an S series lens and is known as being pin sharp. So fair play, Nikon have done an amazing job at 180 millimeter on this lens. But how are we going to fare as regards corner sharpness? What aperture do we need to stop down to? And are the corners gonna get sharp? How about vignetting? How about distortion? How about different focal lengths? So come on, um, let's look into that next and see how we get on. Here we can see three shots taken at 180 millimeter on the 180 to 600 millimeter lens. And on the left, we have a shot at f5.6. In the middle, we have a shot at f8. And on the right, we have a shot at f11. After trying this multiple times, I have found the center sharpness to be best at f8. You can see how it's sharper on the circular patterns here. These patterns always remind me of fine details like bird feathers. So stopping down the lens to f8 does yield better results here for center sharpness at 180 millimeter. 
At 300 mm again we have our three shots at f6, f8 and f11, with f8 being ever so fractionally better than f11 again, and f6 as expected is slightly soft. But that's what you'd get out of any lens when you're shot wide open. These shots are at 400mm at f6, f8 and f11, with f8 being the slightly sharpest option here again. The point to note here though is stopping the lens down by approximately one stop does yield far sharper results. At 500mm our three shots are at f6.3, f8 and f11, with f8 and f11 being very close again but f11 has a slight edge here. f6.3 again is just a small bit soft. From 500mm onwards I found there's a benefit to stopping the lens down by roughly two stops and not just one as it gives you sharper results. At 600mm our three shots are again at f6.3, f8 and f11, with f11 being clearly sharper than f8 here. I originally mentioned weeks ago when I posted my original Z180 to 600mm review that from 530 to 550mm onwards I found this lens to be slightly softer but it was still giving amazing results. This now seems to back that up as we look at side by side shots here now taken at 500mm at f11 and 600mm at f11 side by side. And for me the 500mm shot is just that bit sharper when you look at the fine detail in those circular patterns. Overall the center sharpness on the 180 to 600mm lens is what I would consider to be very good, especially for a very focal telephoto lens. This brings us to corner sharpness. And for this test we'll be looking at the bottom right hand corner in all these shots. I found the corner sharpness more or less mirrors the sharpness results we got earlier for the centre of the image. At 180mm I found that f8 gives you good results, with f11 offering you no serious gains. f5.6 is clearly not that sharp in the corners as you would expect from any lens that's shot wide open. At 300mm then I found near identical results again and f8 was clearly the best option here. At 400mm again being a near exact mirror with f8 still being the better option here for corner sharpness. At 500mm then again we have the same swap as regards sharpness, with nearly a two stop reduction at f11 giving us the best results here. Finally then we have 600mm and f11 being the best option here if you want the entire frame to be sharp from corner to corner. So for optimal sharpness and not just the centre of the image but also corner sharpness I would shoot 180mm at f8, 300mm at f8, 400mm at f8 and then swap once I hit roughly around 480 and upwards, let's say 500mm I'd swap to f11. Anything from there then up to 600mm I would still shoot at f11 for peak sharpness levels across the entire frame. And now we're going to do something completely nuts and I'm going to shove my 2 by converter onto the Z180 to 600 to see how it performs at different focal lengths. Now I have to say I can only test it up to a specific point because I just don't have the room to back up and check this at 1200 millimeters. So that's not going to happen. But we'll see how far we can get and um, check out overall sharpness with a 2x converter installed on the lens itself. So this is the 2x teleconverter on the Nikon Z180 to 600mm lens and the lens is set at 180mm giving us a realistic focal length on a 35mm camera of 360mm and as you can see all these images are slightly soft. The sharpest option out of the tree again is stopping the lens down by one stop and bringing it down to f16. And this is the 2x teleconverter on the Z180 to 600 and the lens set at 400mm which is giving us the equivalent of 800mm on this lens. Again f16 is the sharpest option out of the tree here and funnily enough the lens seems to perform better at 400mm with the teleconverter on it than it does at 180. So as you can see the sharpness levels do drop with the 2x converter attached but it's not quite the end of the world either for sharpness levels. This lens is still reasonably sharp but again it depends on your tolerances and how you defined 
sharpness or how you define sharpness. Looking at vignetting now, there is no real issue with this lens. Even shooting wide open, this lens has little to no vignetting. Yes, it is there slightly, but remember, even when we're shooting on the S series 70 to 200, there was still quite a bit of vignetting there. But again, of course, when you apply profile corrections and whatnot, it's gonna help correct that. Or when you stop the lens down by either one stop, it's gonna really help the vignetting. In fact, it's practically gone. Stop it down by two stops and it is completely gone. So vignetting should not be something you're worried about. When it comes to distortion then, the Z180-600 does an incredibly good job with only very slight pin cushioning distortion showing up at times, which again is very easily corrected in post-processing. You just simply click on the enable profile button and it's gonna correct that distortion. It is absolutely minute. And again, just to remind ourselves, when we look back at the 70-200 f2.8 lens and we look at the distortion at 180 mil, when both of them are side by side, if I pop them up on screen here now, you can see how well the 180-600 does. There is very little distortion on this lens. So it really is an absolutely fantastic lens. And again, the 70-200, oh, is there too much distortion in this lens? No, it is not. We all know when you click on the enable lens profile corrections, it's gonna get rid of that distortion too as well. So at the end of the day, it all boils down to the fact that the Z180-600 is an incredibly good all-round lens. And I, for one, I'm absolutely delighted I have this lens in my bag. Yeah, it does take up a bit of size and it is a bit heavy, but other than that, I have to say I absolutely love this lens. It's a complete cracker. Now, if you would prefer to see a few more real life images and whatnot of things moving around rather than just test charts, you can check out my full Z180 to 600 millimeter lens review, which I did there about a month or two ago. And a few people have asked for me to do a few more, a bit more of a detailed review. So this is it. This is the detailed review on sharpness, distortion, and vignetting. I hope this has helped you. And um, yeah, that's basically it. See you out there everyone and mind yourselves.